Griffin has done it again. Another touchdown on the ground. And extra point was missed, so Oklahoma leading Missouri by 16. 10-7 to lead for the Sooners. As they have two quick scores on their first two possessions of the second half. 65-yard pass to Fagan. Now the 53-yard run by Griffin. And to Carla, bangs it off the upright. As Shardania Mitchell is going back deep, along with Marcus James. Tough night for DiCarlo. He missed the uh, first opportunity, the first field goal, and then he hit the upright. So the kicking game has been a factor in this football game tonight. And especially with a miss by DiCarlo, as we mentioned. Two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. Tigers are back there. But that's against one of the best defensive units in the country. It'll be a little Marcus James from the three. And leaping over. A oh, would-be tackler did trip him up. He's past the 20 to the 20. Three, but a flag down. Russell Dennison got a piece of him. Usually this is some sort of a legal block, and it could very well cost Missouri field position. Hold or a legal block in the back or something like that normally. We have the old hold. So back you go. Another look at the touchdown and the line play and the movement up front. Yeah, sometimes, you know, Oklahoma wants matchups and they, they change the strength of their formation. And watch Doyle, the linebacker, kick his defensive lineman down inside and say, look, shift over. And then he's the uncovered guy During and he can't back. make the tackle. Only Griffin only runs through his tackle, bounces it to the outside, the and then shows tremendous First speed down. to the house. And Doyle, Doyle was there to make the play, but he lost the outside. You know, he got hooked. And, and once he contacted Griffin, very little hitting surface. He slid down him like a barber pole, and Griffin was out. He makes that first guy miss all the time. So Missouri after the mark off, has it for their own 13. Smith wanted to go to Gage on a double move, trying to make a miss, and he's down after a gain of three to the 16-yard line. Eric Clements. All right, Quentin Griffin, you saw him explode for that long touchdown run. He has done it all. He has a couple of SI covers, one national championship, but he has stayed the exact same way in this his final season. He's the first one to practice, last one to leave. Very humble individual. He is the reason for their, them having a heart and soul on this Oklahoma offensive team. Quentin Griffin guy. Absolutely, Eric. Right, got a little follow-up on that after this play. Second and seven. Ball to the 16 of Missouri. Time for the quarterback and the crossing patterns there for Justin Gage. Boy, what a nice tackle for the linebacker, though. Lance Mitchell. He's got the first head of the 25, but I think Gage thought he was going to be able to go down the scene. You know, the thing about Quentin Griffin, his freshman year, his true freshman year, they were going to redshirt him. Bob Stoops is going to redshirt Griffin. In about the seventh or eighth game, they had an injury at running back. They said, you know, Q, we want to, we want to play it because we have a chance to go to a bowl game but you're going to miss you know you're only going to play in about three or four games and have to burn a year he said if it's better for the team i want to do it coach totally unselfish they go to the independence bowl finish with a seven and five record that's that's a guy that's all about team not him on the play fake here comes the heat as they hit smith right on top of them Dan Cody, the sophomore from Ada, Oklahoma. So they've got, and we've seen Cody in the first half doing this, getting pressure on the quarterback. Here's a guy at 6'5", 270, and he's got two more years with the Sooners. I'll tell you, they, what they do is they retool. They don't rebuild. I mean, they have guys waiting in the wings. They do. They have guys waiting in the wings to take the place of great players. I mean, they lose Rocky Kalmus and Roy Williams, two great, great football players, and they have guys stepping right in, and Marcus James not doing well on the sideline. Second and ten, blitz coming off the edge. They pick it up, so Smith has that lane over the left side. Makes him miss at the 30. Oh, what a run. He's got about ten. He may be short of the first down by about a foot. Jonathan Jackson finally caught up with him. You know, in the pitch, you have to bend at the knees, because if you bend at the knees, you get your pad level low. And it all it, it line play, it's all about low pad level is the winner. Who's underneath whose pads here at the line of scrimmage? That is the key. And then the other key is separating from the blocks. Missouri does a pretty good job of sustaining contact. And then you have a guy of Smith's ability that can make people miss. Gosh, he has got something going on. He's tough. He's got the first down to the quarterback sneak just across the 35 to the 36. The Zoo's got to put together a drive inside of seven to play. Reset the change, start the clock. 
Oklahoma's taken the sold-out crowd completely out of the affair. Look at this quarter, 141 yards to 16. And all because of two big plays. One gamble by R.J. Jones turned into a huge, huge touchdown reception by Fagan. And then Doyle is in position to make a play on Griffin, and he misses the tackle. Griffin gets bounced to the outside for another huge play. So Missouri trying to run against one of the best defenses in the nation. Short one, double move, and going for the deep ball. Over his shoulder, grabbed by Gay. He's got it for a first down. What a perfectly placed ball. Not an easy catch. Justin Gage, 6'4", 210 pounds, working against straight, 5'11", 194 pounds at the top of the screen in the route. And as you described, Joel, gets to the outside. Good protection, giving Smith an opportunity. Ball thrown over the outside shoulder, giving the only guy the chance to catch it, being Gage, his receiver. Nice throw, nice route. Smith, the quarterback keeper, gets a little block from his Ooh. line to do pearls, and then he took a shot near the 30, but pops right back up. Kid's tough. Teddy Lehman with the hammer. And Brandon Everidge yes. came over the top and just put the big old pop on him. And this is the quarterback counter once again. Backside guard and tackle pulling, getting their blocks. Woo! Brandon Everidge says, I'm going to make you pay one time, young guy. Welcome to the Big 12. It's the conference opener. We hit in the Big 12. Get that mouthpiece in. There you go. Get it out of there. All right. About six yards. Almost seven. On the carry by Smith. He's got four wide receivers setting up. No tight end. And now can he run for the first down? He will get there. He's run out of bounds near the 25. They're in straight pushing him out. Look at how long his arms are. I'll tell you, when he throws a stiff arm, he's rushed for over 100 yards against this Oklahoma defense. That doesn't happen very often by running backs, never mind quarterbacks. This is a running back that can throw the football well. I mean... He has got the total package. He is a dual threat. And Gary Pinkle is thrilled to death to have this guy for three more years after this. And this is a guy that was also at, offered a scholarship to West Virginia. Right. He had made a commitment, had not signed, but made a commitment to Coach Pinkle and stayed with it. On first and ten. Going for the corner of the end zone, Justin Gage. Can't hang on. Derek Strait made sure of it. Well, Smith gave him an opportunity, couldn't quite catch it. Time for our Home Depot trivia. Well, which current Oklahoma coach was the runner-up to Bo Jackson? The 1985 Ooh. Heisman Trophy. Ooh. Put your hand down. I know that one. Put your it, hand down. That was the closest voting in the Heisman Trophy history. The runner-up to Bo Jackson. <laughs> you are all over it as usual. Second and ten for Missouri. Deep in Oklahoma territory. The blitz up the middle. Kid sees it. Trying to make the most of it. And takes a pop. And really is getting some shots. Now, Everidge over there again. Straight. Lehman. But he pops right back up after his short gain. And didn't get much of a spot. Gain of only two. Now, is there contact in college football? Listen up a little bit. You know what? The young guy will learn not to leave his feet. When you leave your feet to hurdle one guy, in comes another to deposit you unceremoniously, just like Jonathan Jackson did that time. Not law in motion. Or make it a shift by Gage. On third and eight. And moving up front should be a free down. Fire on the spot. Gage has it. Touchdown, Missouri. Well, no flag. I guess he didn't get in the neutral zone, but I saw the same movement you did, Joel. Here's the movement. That's the early movement. Didn't get all the way into the neutral zone. Slant. Beautiful throw. Right between linebacker and corner. And Gage runs the great route. And Smith puts it right between the one and the two. So with so much time left in the game, Missouri's not going to gamble. They'll go for the extra point the conventional way with Michael Buffini. Trying to make it a nine-point deficit, which they do. Missouri bounces right back with their first points of the second half. 
25-27, left of the third, 23-14, Oklahoma. Justin Gage with a big play on a perfect throw. Gage he came into the game, first of the Big 12, fourth of the nation, with eight catches per game. So far today, he's got eight for 118 yards. There's that funky bunch formation covering kicks again. And Perkins Vegan, Savage, wait for the kick. It is going to be Savage from the goal line. And now we've got Whistle. He took a knee. Goal. He took a knee when he caught the football. That's a touchback. You're when he right. caught the ball, his Good right call. knee was down. Inadvertent. He didn't understand that he had put it down. Yep. But you're right. He what? put it down right at the goal line. Watch the right knee. As he catches the football, boom, it's down. He's down right there. Touchback. College football, when the knee's down, you're down. And the Missouri Tigers are not complaining. So, kind of a whimsical look on the face of Bob Stoops. Disbelief. Like, what next? Griffin in the backfield with Hibble. Griffin, Belgian. Still, though, he gets it past the 21 to the 22. Let's head down. Eric Lemons. Well, you just got an idea of how talented Richard freshman Brad Smith is. Upon recruiting him, Coach Gary Pinkle's final test was meeting Smith's church family. After spending three hours there being examined by Smith's church family, he was finally approved. And the deacon told Coach, I don't think you know what you've got your hands on. I think tonight, <laughs> fellas, he does. I think he's got a pretty good idea. Yeah, he sure does. He he's said special. We, he, Coach Pinkle said, we found a time. Yep. Now, heat on Hibble. Trying to ad lib his way into a play, and he throws it wide of Curtis Fagan. But there was a Tiger in the neighborhood, Michael Harden. So a huge third down. Missouri trying to seize the momentum, trailing by nine. Final comment on Smith, the uh, red shirt freshman quarterback. Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator from Missouri, said, he's my kid's idol. And I can't think of a better idol for a young man to have. I'm proud that Brad Smith is my son's idol because this guy is as great a football player as, as he is. He's even better off the field. A super, super individual. Third and close to nine. Hibble's got all down. He's going to try to run for it. Needs to get to the 30 and won't make it. That is not his strength. And Missouri is about to get the ball back. Tarpoff took his feet right out from under him. You know, you can't... You can't Hibble's not uh, not Brad Smith out in the open field. He tried to be Edwin Moses and do the old hurdle routine and came up short. He hit the top of the hurdle and went down. So Missouri holds for the first time in the second half. The previous two tries for Oklahoma resulted in long touchdowns. Justin Gage waiting for the punt. And they got their first pressure. Gage back penalty to run. It's off the helmet of the Sooners at the 30. Should be down right there. At about the 30-yard line. They don't have to talk about using your noggin. Yeah. That was Will Peoples down there on the punt coverage. So now Missouri ready to get the football back. The young man we've been talking about. The redshirt freshman out of Youngstown, Ohio. Brad Smith. He is a diamond. We got the feelings of his head coach on this young man earlier today. Well, I'm really pleased uh, to have a Richard freshman, 18 years old, play at the level he's played. Is uh, um, you know certainly a surprise. I, you know I think it's very unusual to play like he's played, his poise, uh, his confidence, and his production. Uh, but you know this is the only fifth game he's played. You know, this, this is a new experience. Uh, obviously, every week's a new experience for him. And uh, you know playing against this defense will, will certainly you know, be a test. The one thing that impressed me the most, and look into the numbers, because we don't know the young man personally, like the people that work with him every day. Four games into his college career, he had committed only one turnover. Yeah, one turnover, no penalties. Hadn't, hadn't been the uh, reason for any penalties. I mean, he was not beating his own football team. He was beating the opposition regularly. Comment about Will Peoples. That ball hit him off the top of the head. He started covering the punt at 6'1". He's six feet now. <laughs> that sucker <laughs> shook. Smith out of the gun, where they've seen most of their success. Abram bouncing off the man at the 30. He's down the sideline, still maintaining his balance. What a run by Zach Abram. Inside the 40, stunning Oklahoma as Derek Strait makes the stop from behind. Well, Brandon Everidge is the, is the defender that tried to just block him to the ground. And we talked about Abram, 5'10", 225. He just ran right through it. Watch Everidge, boom. Everidge makes the hit, and, and Abram says, that's not, you, you're going to wrap your arms around me. That was a face mask that was missed. And uh, Abram off to the races. Great effort. 
Good blocking up front, and man, Everidge is a big hitter, but it didn't even phase Avery. Well, Banner ends their 29-game conference losing streak, so congratulations to Kevin Steele and the Banner Bears. Now, on the double move, Smith, a jump ball, Justin Gaines. Does he have it? They say he's out of bounds. He held on. Derek Strait on the sideline trying to cover. A little former basketball power forward. Now remember, you have to have possession and one foot in bounds in college football. Possession, one foot in bounds. Did he have possession? Juggle, juggle. Nope, no possession. I, that's a good call. Oh, from that that's angle, a good that's call. tough to see, though. It's a good call. Because he went down with the ball locked in his left arm. Now, what, tell. It, it, like, like uh, it has been said before, one knee equals two feet. If you get your elbow or shoulder down in the field of play with possession, the official was looking. He had a good view. We were looking through his body. The official was looking right at the football. Second and ten. Smith on the quarterback keeper again. With blockers out in front. Going for the first down. Will he get there? Dives and gets there. Boy, he is just slinking. He's tough to get a good hit on. He is. He's like Gumby out there. I mean, he bends. He's flexible. He's Gumby that runs a 4-5. I mean, that's hard to tackle. He just kind of contorts himself and, and makes people miss. Quarterback counter once again. Look at, the, look at the patience. Just letting his blocker set up. He's got tremendous feet, tremendous balance. Just a pure athlete. What a gift. Matt McCoy finally got to him, but not before he moves the chains again. Missouri down by nine. At the 28 of Oklahoma. Abram. He was really counted that time. No game. They almost took his helmet off. Teddy Lehman with a hit. That was the same blocking by the offensive line. They pulled the offside guard and tackle, but instead of quarterback, Abram ran the counter. So Kevin Steele yeah. gets his first conference victory as the head coach of the Baylor Bears. Oh, and they're dancing in the streets of Waco. Can well, they no, dance no, away Waco? Not, now you can on campus, just can recently. You? Yes. Okay, well, they're, they're dancing <laughs> on campus anyway. I, you think what, do you, what do you think they're doing? The line dance? or What is it, the Brazos River? They're swimming down the river. I'd be doing the funky chicken or something funky. T.J. Leon in for the first time. The senior from Norman, Oklahoma. Second and ten. Smith popping it over the little guy. It's complete. Straight and Lehman converging. Man, it's a gain, a short one at that inside the 25. Not much there for T.J. Leon. Got to get points out of this drive if you're the Missouri Tigers. Nine-point game. Got to get something on the board. It's dicey right now if you're thinking about field goal scenarios. Third down and long. Got to get some yards to at least having a more makeable scenario field goal wise pretty strong numbers tonight but they need close to seven looking over to the left side goes over to the left side to Leon. Leon looking for another block he won't get it he's shut down to the 20 yard line so McCoy actually with the tight end had in the previous catch now Leon does have his first grab but Derek straight Put him down short by a little more than two. Decision, do you kick or do you, you go for to. it on fourth? You no. have to field goal and touchdown you need. You're in field goal range. You need two scores. you got to kick the field goal here, and it's so Absolutely. early. It's so early anyway, Dave. Absolutely. you got a quarter in, in, in a minute and 30. I mean, it's a given. But it's going to be. It's not a chip shot. It's about a 38-yard try coming up. Now, the operation, Mike was, operation wasn't a given. Deep snapper has struggled. Everything's been inside for Farmer. Let's see this one. To make it a six-point game. A good snap. Matheny, though, did he block it out? Oh, no, he's got it inside the upright. It's a six-point ball game. It hit the right upright and bounced in. He glanced it off there. Unbelievable. So it turned out to be a chip shot, didn't it? A chip off the bank. Exactly. This is like billiards. He went off the... <laughs> off. Uh, he, he called the shot. Off the right upright. And it's just a boink, boink, and it goes <laughs> right right by the right by the old flag up there. What, what, it, it, he's leaking, 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 leaking. Ting in. Ooh, man, that's tight. I'll tell you something. You sound like a video game up here. <laughs> <laughs> so Missouri celebrates with 10 unanswered points, and they make it a six-point game. With 67 seconds left in the third quarter. It's now Oklahoma 23, Mizzou 17. And I don't think anybody thought Mizzou was going to hang around this long. In Missouri, their, their goal was to get into the fourth quarter with an opportunity to win. 
They're a minute and seven seconds from getting into the fourth quarter, one score down in this football game. Their game plan is being answered to, to this point. Going back deep once again, the combination. Well, Savage in Perkins. And it's going to be taken to the five-yard line by Perkins. Across the 20, look out to the 25, and he's belted at the 28-yard line. By Orlando Good, the reserve wide receiver. Well, this week on Fox NFL Sunday, Michael Strahan of the Giants trying to slow down Emmett Smith and the Cowboys. It's all followed by Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. They're trying for the fourth straight, taking on Fred Taylor of the Jags. Other regional activity is all tomorrow on Fox. All of a sudden, that incredible game in Columbia, Missouri, with 58 seconds left in the third quarter. The number three team of the nation trying to regain the momentum they had just a couple of minutes ago. Kiwan Jones. In the backfield, he'll get him the short side toss sweep. And they'll put him out early. Knock him out just across the 30. They'll spot it near the 31-yard line. Jason Simpson, once again, the route. Other safety, they call the whip. Forced him. And, and Joe, I, I think Missouri's been more methodical than Oklahoma. Oklahoma dominated the third quarter. It was due to missed tackles. R.J. Jones goes for an interception. Misses a tackle on Sav or Fagan, and Fagan takes it to the house. Doyle misses a tackle on Quentin Griffin, and he takes it to the house. Missouri, Missouri has been more methodical. They have not forced a turnover yet, though. And they're one of the best teams in the nation to doing that. Griffin, big hole. He's got a first down. He's into the secondary and plus the 50, all the way down to the Missouri 42. The senior from Aldine, Texas, doing it again, and close to going over 100 yards with that carry. Nice job. Watch watch the lane right here, the natural lane that Griffin takes advantage of. You gotta close it a little tighter. I mean, you know, just got you can't just wander up the a line of scrimmage. Ellison has to tighten it down. He has to squeeze it a lot better than that. Good blocking by left guard and left tackle, but Ellison has to squeeze the point of attack. He just kind of took himself out of the play. 12 carries, 94 yards now for Quentin Griffin. And they'll keep going back to him until they slow him down. They collared him around the ankles. Sean Doyle got him low after a gain of three. Well, they talk about feathering it out. Ellison, as you say, he feathered himself right out of the play. Yeah, he did. He got caught in no man's land, and he, and he kind of did it all, all by his lonesome. Nice blocking inside. I mean, that's that's just a great job. I mean, the point of attack was collapsed. They, they knocked right down inside. But they were expecting, you know, a little bit of help, a little bit of help by Ellison, who was unblocked. And Ellison was shocked he was unblocked and took himself out of the play. Well, that's the end of the third quarter of play as Missouri came back after Oklahoma dominated the first seven or eight minutes of the third 15 minutes. After three, 23-17 Oklahoma. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Serra on Fox Sports Net. Incredible day for redshirt freshman quarterback Brad Smith. Total offense, he's close to 300 again. Make it 2003. <laughs> he's a candidate next year from what I've seen. Griffin breaking tackles. Down to the first snap of the fourth quarter on second and long. He makes it third and short outside of the 36 of Missouri. Bynum finally got two, the little guy. As you said, there's not much room to bring him down. No, oh, look at him. 101 yards on 14 carries. Averaging over seven yards a pop coming in. He's doing exactly that. Just about his average, 7.3. Coming into tonight's game, and he's at it again. Missouri has not beaten Oklahoma as a ranked team since 1983. They shut him up that day, 10 to nothing, and one of the assistant coaches, Andy Hill, caught the only touchdown of the game. Now, how critical, the third down, and it looked too easy for Oklahoma on the quick one over to Mark Clayton. Well, you Again, saw when it's only third and four, Dave, they're giving them six, seven, eight yards off the line. Yeah, they were afraid of getting beaten deep, beaten over the top, and they're giving that big cushion. You know, they're... You, look at this. Look at, look at how far off the line of scrimmage he is. You know, I mean, that's, that's just saying, you know what? You got speed... And I'm afraid of your speed, Clayton. So I'm going to I'm going to give you an opportunity to catch the football and rally to the ball and bring you down immediately. First down, Sooners. Opening minute of the fourth quarter. They've got it to the Mizzou 26. Pibble going deep and up for grabs, almost intercepted. Ooh, Jones almost had it. It went through Brandon Jones and R.J. Jones almost had his fourth pick over the last two games. Jones and Jones. Is that a law firm or an accounting company? There's something out there. Jones on Jones. And uh, R.J. Jones blew a tire. He had a tire change down there. This Missouri program has been in hibernation for so long, almost a couple of decades now. I remember the 70s when they did have big ones. They had big upsets. 
That has not been the case for close to 20 years now. Now, second and ten. Quick one. The tight end, Trent Smith. Now, Oklahoma has to get some yards on this third and long. DiCarlo, the place kicker, has already missed a field goal, has already missed an extra point. It could be 27-17, but DiCarlo has cost them four points. Bob Stoops is thinking, geez, do I, do I have him try a field goal of over 40 yards? I don't think so. I think it might be four down territory. We'll have to see what happens on third down. His longest so far this year has been a 44-yarder. Now the critical third and long. Griffin, that also works in the backfield. Hibble with time, pocket holds up well. Now it collapses, and he's down. It's a sack. They got him outside of the 26, back near the 27. Kenny collapsing on the quarterback. That's what's called the old coverage sack, Joel. Nowhere for Hibble to go with the football. And this is a guy you got to put two men on. And, and they do. They, you know, they kind of wash him down, pancake. Good job by Skinner. And, and nowhere for Hibble to go with the football. And he doesn't have that explosive start. So they are going to try the old 43-yard field goal attempt right here. Well, a true freshman from Carrollton, Texas, with plenty of pressure. He already missed one, a 34-yarder. It's back, it's on its way, plenty of distance, but it's wide. Oh, pushed it right. He pushed it, and there is a flag down in the play. Another flag, a second flag comes in late. Is it the same thing, or is it two different things? Are they going to call excessive celebration yeah, on Missouri? Lines, yes, the linesman came in real late. Yeah, and he saw Missouri jumping around. Boy, if they call celebration there, Gary Pinkle will blow a gasket. It's a legal procedure on Oklahoma. Same same uh, call by both flags. Missouri will say, nah, we'll take the, we'll take the play. Missed field goal. Illegal formation. On Oklahoma, there were only six players on the line of scrimmage. Penalties declined. First down. Missouri continues to have the momentum after the miss by DiCarlo. We'll see if they can take advantage of the situation. It was a miss from 43 yards away. Never had a chance. Tigers have it back. Down by only six. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah welcomes you back once again to the heartland. The University of Missouri campus, the trophy room. In the college football offices here, Oklahoma, number three in the nation, clinging to a six-point lead. We're only two and a half minutes into the fourth quarter, so still so much time left in this, baby. And with the overtime we've already seen today and this year, like the game we did against North Carolina State, Dave, and Texas Tech, anything yep. could happen. No question about it. Parity in college football. Smith wants to throw. Now, can he elude it? Yes, at the 30. Great speed to the 40. Look at him get a block downfield. Breaks through an arm tackle to the 40. This kid is incredible. Well, Lance Mitchell, the linebacker, was in pursuit, and it was no contest. And supposedly, Lance Mitchell runs 4.65. If that's the case, Brad Smith runs a lot faster than 4.5. I mean, he just steps up into the pocket, and now he bounces, and look at, look at Mitchell. No, no, no contest. And then down the football field, Gage working, Gage working. And he steps inside of Perkins, splits two defenders, picks up an extra seven yards. Big time, big time. And knew when to go out of bounds. Didn't take the extra hit like we've seen with other quarterbacks that have suffered concussions on similar plays. First and ten inside the Oklahoma 38. Abram, anything? They've shut that play down since the opening quarter. No gain. It'll be second and ten. Well, this is Brad Smith's first crack at the national landscape, national television, and United States of America. Welcome this guy right here, Brad Smith. He has got star quality written all over him. <laughs> that is one excellent athlete at the quarterback position. You know, you're dangerous. You're dangerous with an etch a sketch. I'm telling you, man. Brad Smith has already got over 300 yards in total offense. He averages 317 a game. He has rushed for 155 yards, 98 a game coming in on average, third best of the Big 12. Now, looking over to the slot, it was available early, backpedaling and overshoots. Darius Outlaw, well, that's not all bad for Missouri. He could have been a disaster. Do you know how tough that play is? Well, I mean, he's backpedaling. Yeah, in the, in the face of pressure, going away from the line of scrimmage, throws across his body to the left sideline from the middle of the field. He showed elusiveness and arm strength. 
Are you telling me we can make more visits to the University of Missouri in the future? I'm telling you that, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you that this guy is the real deal. You know, people are like, ah, oh, you know, he played against Troy State, Bowling Green, Ball State. This is Oklahoma. This defense is legit, and he's doing it. Now third and ten. Can he get enough yards over the middle? He's got a first down. Darius Outlaw hands on. Everett gave him a shot again, but he hangs on to the 25. And you know what? Brad Smith is, as advertised, tremendous athletic ability, but so poised. I mean, he's not hes not excited. I mean, he's, he's in total control. And look at the patience in the pocket and throws a dart. And, and it's just, and it's like, you know, keep, keep going. Keep going. You're something. I mean, you're making life easy for us up front. We love you, man. We absolutely love you. Now, Missouri trying to take the lead for the first time today. They trail by six. They've got a first and ten of the Oklahoma 25. Tough running for Zach Gabriel. He's doing his best, but every time he spins, somebody's waiting. That time, Dan Cody finally wrapped him up. It'll be second and ten. And this is where Missouri struggled mightily last year. Gary Pinkle talked about the fact that his football team wasn't strong enough, wasn't fast enough, wasn't well conditioned enough, and they got hammered in the fourth quarter. Here, they're playing the number three team in the country with ten and a half minutes to play off their feet in the fourth quarter. Gary Pinkle has done one whale of a job with his players here. Second and ten, Smith looking over and too tall again for this time. Sean Coffey, first time he went after the redshirt freshman from Cleveland. Look at the height on Sean And it Sean was a Coffey. little bit behind him as well. But you're right, 6'6 six, six on coffee. Man, that's a that's a heck of a coffee cup of coffee. There's 6'6. Six, six. That's a tall, that's not a tall drink of water. That's a tall drink of coffee. Well, Matheny already has a 38-yarder. This would put it in, if they don't get another yard at about 42, 43 yards. Smith trips to the wide side. Ten minute the line of scrimmage for Oklahoma. Quarterback draw. And he breaks tackles into the secondary. Forget about it. Touchdown, Missouri. Unbelievable. point away from taking the lead. Ten men at the line of scrimmage. He busts it. Everidge overruns it. McCoy has no chance. Smith freezes McCoy and bounces it to the inside the pylon. This kid is, whoo, man. <laughs> now, Bovini in the spotlight. And Missouri has the lead. Do you believe it? The Tigers were just down 23 to 7. And now with a one-point lead for head coach Gary Pinkle. They haven't used their seats for some time now. 67,000 strong in Columbia, Missouri. Disbelief on the Oklahoma sideline. Well, Brad Smith will make you thinking about think about blitzing. When he hits a crease, it's bye-bye. This bunch group has got some rhythm, don't they? They do. They, they, they Perkins and Savage headed to the side of Perkins. Look out. He returned to last year this distance, but not this time. He won't make it to the 20. What coverage? Brandon Barge down there. Are these kids pumped up, Dave? Look at Smith's numbers. Almost 10 yards a carry. In the second half, Brad Smith has been a show. I mean, this kid, he is so poised. He's a little stiff arm there. The slant pass for a touchdown to Gage. Just right on the money with his throw. And when he finds a, a lane, a rush lane, in the defensive line, if they lose their lane integrity, he takes it out the house. And this was just a fantastic, you know, it makes you think about not blitzing anymore. He's got McCoy in the open field one-on-one. -on -one. Ten men crowd the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma blitzes. He finds a crease and says, don't do that anymore. On first down, Hibble out of the gun. He's got space on the outside. Will Peoples definitely down the sideline with plenty of room. And that'll quiet him down to the 49-yard line. I still can't believe they're giving him that big a cushion on the side. And you know what? If they're going to do that, Joel, and let him catch the football, you have to tackle. And that was a missed tackle. I mean, 
it, it should have been about an eight yard completion, but because of the missed tackle, Peoples takes it about an extra 15 to 18 yards. If, if you're gonna let him catch the football in front of you, you gotta end the journey right there. 10-04 left in regulation. On a first down, quick Griffin bouncing off the first. There is a flag on the play, right at the original line, Trent Smith. Did, did he leave early? Did Oklahoma have six on the uh, seven on the line of scrimmage? Illegal shift. Two men moving at the same time. Cost Oklahoma a gain of three on first down, but they had three snaps to make it up. So while they mark it off, we remind you, you can get your NFL fix tonight. Don't forget it starts a day early. Join us later right after college football. Tommy Davidson, Tony Saragusa, Michael Irvin. Also Chris Myers hosting. It's the NFL show presented by the U.S. Postal Service. That's tonight after college football on Fox Sports Net. Now the defensive coordinator for the Missouri Tigers. Matt, Matt Eberflus. Eberflus. Yeah, they've got one of the youngest staffs we've ever met with. Exactly. He looks like he's 18. The screen, Griffin, and he can't hang on. Did he control it enough, though, to yeah. make it a catch? I think it's a catch and a fumble, and he recovered his own fumble. Okay, lost the handle once he took off. He is always moving so fast to begin with. He is. He's a blur. But he, but he has possession. It looks like he takes a couple of steps. It catches it, takes a couple of steps, and then loses it. Ooh, that's cool. He took a step and a half anyway. Oklahoma he never did has, tuck it. They have not turned the ball over today. There's only, been one, only one turnover in the game. Yep. And that was the interception by the Sooners in the first half. Now Hibble on second and long. Fires behind his man. It popped away from Curtis Fagan by R.J. Jones. Ball thrown behind. Fagan to the slam. And with that turnover, that takeaway, Joel, Oklahoma's had at least one takeaway in, in, in 40 of their last 42 games. But Missouri's really taking care of the football tonight. Bob Stoops coaches aggressiveness, and he's got size and speed, and that aggressive mentality and the physicality of the players results in defensive takeaways a lot of times. Biggest third down of the game for Oklahoma. They need to shift the momentum, trailing by a point. Trips to the wide side for Hibble. Here comes he Hibble's down inside the 40. The blitz paid off. Russ Bell finished up the play. The junior tackle. Every single member of the defensive line got a tremendous first step. Watch the takeoff. And they all hit an edge. And look at that. The, the, they all simultaneously beat their pass protectors. I mean, it was meet at the quarterback like a four-lane interstate. Blake Ferguson to put it away. Justin Gage waits back deep for Missouri. Not Marcus James, but Gage at the 20. High one, but a very short one. And Missouri will stay away from it, I believe. Wow, look at the bounce. Great bounce for Oklahoma all the way inside the 20. That is a 20-yard roll just about. It hit close to the 35. And it dies near the Missouri 16. Well, there was only three teams. Well, the only conference that could say they had three teams undefeated. The Big 12 to start play today. Texas still alive and well with a goose egg when it comes to the L's. But Kansas State could not say that after losing at Boulder today. It's a great game. As Colorado upset, upset Kansas State 35-31 and has Colorado shown what they're made of. Coming back and beating UCLA after losing Oaks, Oaks leaves, and now with a big victory at home. Well, they're defending Big Ten, uh, 12 champs, and they have the heart of a champion. Smith on his own. And nothing there as he takes a shot at the 17-yard line from Lance Mitchell. Back downstairs. What's the latest, Eric? All right, Oklahoma, of course, coming off the field after that sack. Everybody, as Dave Lapham said, had a meeting at the quarterback, and they all looked up at the replay to see just how bad the protection was on that particular play. Meanwhile, Smith is hurt after that last run. He's shaken up. He's being attended to by the official on the field. Right now, all the momentum with Missouri, but it would be a big, big blow if Brad Smith couldn't finish this game after taking a hard shot on the sideline here. He took the Oklahoma side of the field, guys. Right to the head, Eric. He took a, a shot right to the head, and right now he's trying to decide if he's in Columbia or Norman. 
and the trainers are looking at his eyes to see how clear they are and, and watch as Ducks his head. Ooh, he took helmet yes. to helmet. Lance, Lance Mitchell. Mitchell. Just a tremendous blow to the head of Brad Smith. But it looks like he's negotiating his way off the field. He's not zigzagging. He's not serpentining. So he looks like he's got his head cleared up a little bit. Now they bring in a quarterback who has started in the past, though. He has not yet taken a snap today, and that is Kirk Farmer, who Coach Pinkle told us to hear. Now, here's a senior. And he started 14 games over the last three seasons. He's had seasons wiped out, though. Good portion of one due to a broken leg. But Coach Pinkle said he's been really supportive of Brad Smith. Ah. Well, Missouri jumps. And all of a sudden now, a different voice, a different cadence. Absolutely. Different timing, different voice, different cadence. Kirk Farmer, after he lost the job, he said, all I'm going to do is compete every day in practice to get it back. Prior to the snap, false start. Missouri, five yards, still second down. And now Brad Smith is going to come right back in after the loss of five. So Smith clears out the cobwebs. And you can understand it after we saw the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact for and, Lance Mitchell. And he was trying to get down. I mean, he was trying to assume the fetal position, get down a little bit, and uh, and he took it right in the noggin. Oh, it's intercepted. It is picked up. The interception for Everett. And Oklahoma's got it deep in Missouri territory. Well, I wonder if the cobwebs were totally clear. It's interesting, though, you would throw deep in your own territory at this point of the game. Oh, man, that, that young man's bitterly disappointed. He's, he's only thrown two interceptions on the season. He threw one tonight and just staring down his primary receiver, Gage, trying to hit the slant again, and Everett's just followed the eyes of the quarterback right to the football. And you got to believe Gary you're Pinkle. going to throw the slant as many times as they have tonight. You better mix things up. Gary Pinkle was right over there to his young quarterback, Brad Smith, saying, we're with you. Don't worry about it. You're the reason we have a lead right now. Don't worry. We'll come back. Griffin and Works. They give over to the near side. Not much there for Works, but he lunges for an extra yard to the 14. Yeah. That was something because Pinkle knows he needs Brad Smith in a big way when they get the football back. And turnovers have been a big story in both these teams' successes early this season. Missouri came in plus 10. Now they're plus 8, minus 2 tonight. Oklahoma came in plus 8. They're plus 10 now, plus 2 on the night. So turnovers have been huge for both teams. Antoine Bynum, Bynum shaken up on the play, so he leaves the field. He's their best edge pass rusher, Joel. That's a big blow to lose him. Ronaldo works. Kiwan Jones comprising the backfield for Oklahoma. And right now, a chip shot of a field goal for the most part for DeCaro. If they can't pick up the first down. A two-back set. That's real rare. Hibble on second and eight. Into the end zone he goes. It's just wide of Antoine Savage. R.J. Jones trying to keep up with him. It was available, though. Our Home Depot trivia question we asked earlier, which current Oklahoma coach, the runner-up to Bo Jackson for the 85 Iveson Trophy. How about their offensive coordinator, former Iowa quarterback Chuck Long? Yeah, he did. Here he is right here on the very end, Chuck Long. He had a great career for Hayden Fry at the University of Iowa. They've only lost one game, 5-1, and one, one loss to Iowa State there. Big rival. Well, the timeout has been called by Oklahoma to find out what they do. Fairly by a point when we come back on third and eight. Saturday on Sportsnet brought to you by Kia Sarah, one company, countless solutions. By Subway, eat fresh. By Zenith, digitize the experience. Fan by Speed Channel, the new home of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. The Memorial Union, and what a beautiful campus. We're at the University of Missouri, works in Griffin, flanking. Nate Hibble, third and eight from the Missouri 14-yard line. Pressure on the edge over the middle, and too tall, trying to get it to Curtis Fagan. Well, that never had a prayer. Missouri decided to bring six. They said, you know what, third and long, Hibble is one-dimensional. He doesn't have the quick feet of a Smith. He's staying in the pocket, he's going to throw it. So we know we have a stationary target. We're going to bring six people and make them hurry his throw. And it comes back. The man who struggled, DiCarlo, he's missed two field goals and an extra point tonight. All makeable, although the last field goal, 43 yards is no gimme. See if he can convert here. For the lead, a 31-yard attempt. He just missed from 43 yards away. 
fake. Now the fake into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. They went to the tight end. Chris Chester on the score. So Bob Stoops, the gambler, who comes through. You know how much courage it takes to do that? I mean, that, that is phenomenal. And Bob Stoops is going for two. Doesn't have a choice, leading by five. You know, I'm, I lost track of the holder. Was the holder McCoy? If the holder was a backup quarterback. Holder Matt McCoy, the junior from Jenks, Oklahoma. Well, I'll tell you, McCoy throws a darn good ball then. Because, uh, you know, usually you see a backup quarterback throw a pass like that. McCoy's the, the normal holder, and then they didn't they didn't tip their hand with a different holder. And McCoy comes out and throws a strike. Double coverage. I mean, Missouri had good coverage on Chester. Great throw, great catch, and courage by Bob Stoops to call the play. Now the two-point conversion. You've got to believe Quentin Griffin is going to touch the football. He's back there with Ronaldo Works. Well, they're going to go right here to their big tight end, Trent. Looking for Smith. Back in the end zone. Yes, they find Curtis Payton for two. But what a job in setting the face. And then the throw you talked about. Boy, McCoy. I mean, right. Look, there's, there's good coverage, but that is just a perfect throw. They I mean, there's a couple of guys back there. They never located the ball, though. No, they didn't. They it, really didn't turn around and look at the football. But but the coverage wasn't terrible, and McCoy throws a nice ball. I mean, that, that I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I mean, you have you have bracket coverage on that, and, and they get it done. You have you have Kenny and, and, and you have King in coverage, and McCoy throws a strike, and the two-point conversion along the back of the uh, the end zone, just doing the tightrope back there is Fagan. They ran a little double-crossing pattern, and Trent Smith went underneath, and Fagan crossed behind him, and it was on the back line for a two-point conversion, seven-point game. And look at the congratulations McCoy is getting. That is one huge play for that nickel defensive back slash quarterback. He slash. Now, was he in bounds when he caught it? He got the call. Possession, one foot down. Where's that right foot? Left he foot was out of bounds. Left foot's down, though. Left foot's down. That's a catch. Left foot's down. What was down first, though? That's a good call. And a tough one. Yep. Was the left down? Right. Or did the right hit first? Yep. And he had possession and only one down. But which one was down first? And it was if it was simultaneous. That's tough. We're doing a we're slow motion stop. They have to make it right on the spot. They go away from James. It's going to be instead the wide receiver with some nice moves. Shredania Mitchell all the way to the 30-yard line. So Missouri's got it in decent field position. Well, the pressure back on the Tigers. And Richard freshman quarterback Brad Smith, as they tell Mitchell to stay in the game, which tells you that it's going to be a spread attack. And, and Lance Mitchell gets a big assist because Lance Mitchell is the one that goes helmet to helmet. Boom, right there, and, and, and knocks Brad Smith woozy. Farmer comes in, different cadence, and they get a false start. And then the very next play, Smith comes back, and Everidge reads the route, reads his eyes, steps in for the big pick that led to the touchdown. Now, Johnson. Now, Brad Smith, rather, with plenty of room past the 35, up to the 38. He gets eight on first down, but, you know, back to the interception. They have 14 points off turnovers. Don't forget about the first turnover. That turned into a 20-yard time or 20-yard field goal. So it's 10 off turnovers right now. 10 off turnovers, which negates seven points missed by your kicker. Two field goals and an extra point. How do you so, think DiCarlo felt after they went from fake? Oh, yeah, well, and that's really another reason that went. That was part of the thought process that went through Stoops' mind, I'm sure. From the 38, second and two. Abrams will get the first down, but just barely across the 40. Teddy Lehman on the hit. But that's what makes Bob Stoops Bob Stoops. I mean, you know, he, he he's has, got guts. He has guts, and that's Mike Stoops' brother, the defensive coordinator. And and, and Bob is is just, I'll tell you, he, he's, he has his kids believing. It's just they wait to win. It's not like they expect to win. They wait to win. And it, it all starts with him and the attitude that, that's pervasive. T.J. Leon, the only one in the backfield. Four wide receivers to spread the defense. It'll be a five-man rush. And Brad Smith can't get away from Teddy Lehman. It's his sack, and that's a rarity in this game for Oklahoma. 
Sure is. I think that's only their second one tonight. They came in with four. I think that's only their second sack on the night, I believe. So now second and about 14 coming up for Missouri. Clock working against it now. Inside of five minutes to play. Again, three wide receivers this time. Shallow cross for Justin Gage. Doesn't do much, though. They run it perfectly. Back to the 40-yard line. Lehman on his back. And now the biggest third down of the day for Brad Smith and Missouri. And Mike Stoops and the defensive uh, staff and players are, are glad that it's third and 11. Because third and medium, third and short, it's no challenge for Brad Smith. Third and 11 presents a little bit of a challenge anyway. Missouri still has all three of their timeouts left. Now Smith with a double move. Looks down the middle, and it's intercepted. He had, I thought, coming over to this side. Gage, as he took a shot, outlaw was the intended target. Eric Bassey with the pick. So Oklahoma coming up with the big plays. Three takeaways. And none so far for Missouri. Bassey is the replacement of Roy Williams at the safety position. And Bassey just has great coverage. He looks like the primary receiver. I mean, he, he was just all over outlaw. And, and Brad Smith takes a late hit and, and, and takes it down to the turf, provided by Dan Cody. But he saw the interception and dejected. Back-to-back -back interceptions for Oklahoma. Griffin can't spin away, gets a yard. And now Missouri will have to stop him. If they can't stop him after three snaps, then they have to start thinking about using their timeouts right away. I really thought that if it was going to be a close game for Missouri, it would be very low scoring. This is a lot higher scoring football game than I thought it would be for it to be this close in the fourth quarter. And this Oklahoma team, top 10 in scoring defense, giving up an average of the first four of only 10 points a game. Gives you an idea of what Smith presents for the opposition. Griffin and Works in the backfield. It's out of the gun. It's Griffin. And he breaks tackles effectively again. Should have been a loss. Instead, he's got into the 38. Stayed in bounds. James Kinney thought he had him. Ferguson finally made the hit. The executive producer of Fox Sports Net, Bill Borson. Coordinating producers of College Football Saturday, Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Tonight's game produced by Mike Kelly, directed by Ken Fox. The College Football Saturday studio show, produced by Loy Maxson and directed by Joe Woods. Senior Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Berry. And the Vice President of Field Operations is Karen Newman. I'll tell you what, all, all our guys that provided the pictures tonight, they brought their A game as well. Boy, we got some good shots of what took place in this football game. It was excellent. Been that kind of night in Columbia, Missouri. Now Oklahoma hitting only a third of their third down tries. They've got five for 15 so far, and now they use their second timeout. So they've only got one left. Missouri still has three on the board. They stop it with 235 to play. And, could, and we talked about it frequently. Can Missouri afford not to get up on the line of scrimmage close to the wide receivers? And, and really, with Hibble, he's one-dimensional. They know if it's, a, if it's a shotgun snap to Hibble, he's throwing the football. So they're going to have to provide the tight coverage. I, you know, now they have to decide, do we blitz? And if we blitz, we have to provide tighter coverage. I mean, all that is, is flying through everybody's heads right now. It's a very young Missouri team for head coach Gary Pinkle. And now the frustration. This week, and it starts tomorrow. Fox NFL Sunday. Michael Strahan of the Giants trying to corral Emmett Smith of the Cowboys. Then Donovan McNabb of the Eagles. Will they get their fourth on the road in Jacksonville, Florida? It's this week on Fox. That's great music. You know, give a little rhythm to that music. You know, nobody has left this ballpark. Absolutely. I mean, it is jam-packed. They wondered what it would take to get this program going once again. It's blackout. I mean, it's the lighting's good. Everybody's wearing black. That's why it looks like it's, you know, it's night. It is nighttime, but, it's, you know, good lights. See the lights. Everybody's in black, though. What a, what a football game these people have seen. And this kid is a beacon of light for the Missouri program right there. He is something special with a capital S. Brad Smith, the redshirt freshman from Youngstown, Ohio. Griffin. The single to the backfield with Hibble. 
two to the short side. Rue on the outside of the wide side. Hibble looking up in the middle. Now fires underneath the tight end. They don't get the first down. Trent Smith lost his footing. It'll be a punting situation. The Missouri should use the timeout right here. They should, absolutely. Clock moving. Yep. And they still haven't called a timeout. Up next on Fox Sports Net, Oregon and Arizona. So another top 10 team coming up. The number three Oklahoma Sooners trying to hang on. And Missouri is not stopping the clock. Interesting. And really, it took a while for the officials to set the football and start the play clock. And, and, and Oklahoma should just melt it down to the two seconds. Justin Gage waiting for the Blake Ferguson punt. And he will take it down very wisely with about a minute 45 left. One second on the play clock, they snapped it. Kicks it away. Gage calling for the fair catch in Missouri. Needs the move. 77 yards to tie it up. So the Tigers have it at their own 23. Minute 39, all three timeouts remaining. But don't forget, by not stopping the clock, they lost a good 40 seconds. And this young man, <laughs> if he can bring his team from behind to tie this football game with a minute and 39 seconds to go, on top of everything else he's done, there's been a lot of good and some bad, three interceptions. They were all, all painful. But he has done a great job tonight. Two to each side for Brad Smith. He's got all day. Now, room to move. Makes a mess. Do you believe this kid? Flag um, right. down, though. It's going to go against Missouri, I believe, downfield trying to block. Yeah, I think it's one of the big offensive linemen locked up. Locked up down the football field. And maybe get his hands outside the framework of the body. There'll be a holding penalty from that spot about the 40 142 yard line it looked like well it was a first down for brad smith it'll be a hole oh, the, the other way the other way well the big guy was trying to go down through the block and he was held up that's a rarity isn't it well they, they didn't call holding against an offensive lineman so they must have called called one of the uh one of the tight ends or wide, wide receiver it's going to be tacked on the end of the run it I was guess. while the play was in progress. So they're trying to determine exactly where the spot took place. Now it's, it's one of those. Is it a spot foul? Spot foul yes. deals, exactly. And, and do you decline it because you gain more yards than the five from the spot of the foul? They're Holy tacking it on. On Oklahoma. Ten yards from the end of the run. Yeah. Tacking it on. So that turns out to be a gain of 27 yards, including the penalty for Mizzou. 90 seconds to play, and they only need 50 yards. And, and, and Bob Stoops is saying that. Isn't that from the point of the stop, uh, fr from the point of the spot? Why are you tacking it on the end? And he's kind of befuddled and bewildered, and I'm not sure he got an explanation he was real happy with. Seven-point lead for Oklahoma. Clock running against Missouri. And Smith again. With the lane closing, he's got about seven on that carry, and they need to call, they need to call a timeout. They finally do, but boy, they wasted some time. 62 seconds to play. Still, with two timeouts on the board, that's an eternity. Maybe they just don't want to give Oklahoma the ball back. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think they're trying to score with as little time left as possible, and that's all. That's all well and good, but if you try to take it, be too cute with it, it can backfire on you. And, and you, you might not have enough time to run plays even with timeouts in your possession. So, but this is a, you talk about growing up fast. How much pressure is this kid facing right now? 209 yards rushing against Oklahoma. This isn't, you know, <laughs> Troy State. A, a new Missouri quarterback record against the Sooners defense, which is outstanding. We talked about the Sooner team speed. Brad Smith said, what speed? You know, I mean, I, he, this guy's operating at warp speed. You know, Dave, last week he accounted for 350 yards of total offense, 213 through the air, 137 rushing. Tonight, he's got 209 rushings. We just saw a new Missouri record for a quarterback. Tack onto that, 174 throwing. So he's just below 400 in total offense. But he'd say, you can have all those yards if I didn't throw those three picks. You know, for all that you, good... You can, throw, you can throw the slant a little bit too often, can't you? Yeah, and, and, and for all the good, he's done an incredible amount of good but all of his interceptions resulted in points. 
and, and, and he's, he bemoans that fact. There's no doubt about it. But this guy is big, big time. Now, after the timeout, Missouri's got it. Second and short. Second and four. They put him down to the 44. Out of the gun where he's been so successful. He's got a wall to the right side. Over the middle and through the hands of the tight end, Fredrickson. Teddy Lehman in the back of the tight end. I'll tell you right now, I don't know how much I take the ball out of his hands. They had a wall and a seal over to the near side. Right side of the field, he could have run for 15 yards easy. That's true. And, and once again, remember in college football, the clock stops when you generate a first down. So they still have two timeouts remaining. But they only have two seconds. snaps now. F right, 58 seconds on the clock. And so what we were talking about, being judicious with the use of timeouts, you can almost play a 2 cute. They need four yards and two snaps. Smith looking underneath, now going and throwing a low percentage pass behind Sean Coffey, the redshirt freshman. So it's down to one snap for Missouri. And it's interesting that they haven't kept it in the hands of Brad Smith. And, and on this fourth down play, snapping the ball from the left hash mark, I would get him out of pocket, give him a run pass option to the right side. Move the pocket. Yep. Just by design to a strong side, his right side, which is right now the wide side of the field. Or I don't know if I would rather have a personal protector out there running naked and let him get out of pocket and, and, and put a lot of pressure on the outside linebackers and corners, but... And I'd also tell the kid to call timeout if you don't like what you see. This is it. Fourth and four. Smith looking to run. Will they get there? Diving. Oh, it's loose. he lost the ball. Loose ball. Who gets it? Still on the ground. Missouri, Oklahoma. Missouri. Missouri got it inside the 25. Wow. Unbelievable. Palmer, the big salty guard. The kid from Oklahoma, the kid from Norman, the tough guy. Now, they better regroup in a hurry. There's only 43 seconds left. Time they're out. going to talk about. Time out. They're talking about now. It's a fourth down fumble. He had the first down already. Do they bring it back to the point of the fumble? Yeah, they do. But I, I think he already had the necessary yards for the yeah, first he down. He got to the 39 when it came free. And that's what they're talking to Gary Pinkle about. The old Dave Casper rule. You know, fourth down fumbles, you can't fumble it. it, it forward on fourth down and advance it I think you can if you are recover your own fumble you said it you only the man who gets it you can't have somebody else fall on your fumble when you fumble it forward on fourth down and Smith didn't come up with it so it goes back to the spot where he lost possession and man it's it's uh it's it's very dicey whether he, he makes it or not it looks like oh, he's got it by a yard looks like he makes it he wanted to go to the 40. he needed to go to the 40. the foot's on the 39, 39 yeah he's, he's got the first down yeah he does so they'll bring it back to the 39. And this they're trying to determine exactly where the ball was when it came out of, out of smith's hands boy there was a pop that ball came flying out of there the ball was down. The ball will come back to the spot of the fumble. It was beyond the line to gain. It's a first down. Now, Missouri's got to hurry because they'll start the clock, and they might want to call a timeout here. I, I, I think so. Now, now they're we're, going to get up to the line. That, is Oklahoma that, ready? That, that ball's out on the other, on the 41-yard line, not the 39. They got a very generous spot. They put, they put the spot of the ball where he fell after the tackle. The ball came out two yards behind that at the 41-yard line, and they spotted it where he fell down at the 39. A big, big break. Big break for Missouri. Huge break for the Tigers is the throw and their chances are still alive and Gary Finkel asking about the fourth down fumble uh, he's got the first down they're not disputing that uh, he, he's yelling about the timeout or something but he but Smith lost possession of the football at the 41 yard line not the 39 yard line so I, if our Gary Pinkle obviously not aware of that and he's still fighting for everything he could possibly get for his football team but he got a big break right there so Missouri still has a hope. They have one timeout remaining. And it wouldn't be alive. Now, had not for a, right they've at the received 40. a great spot. Right at the four. Look, the ball's out. He has to get here to the 40-yard line. The ball's out at the 38 and a half. And this is where they mark it at the 39 where he falls for forward progress. The ball's out. And then it goes forward. And, that, and they mark it where he goes down. And the ball was out of there long before that. Big, big break for the Tigers. No review in college football. Nope. So now the Tigers are ready to go. They do have one timeout remaining, trailing 31-24. Can Smith do it again? 
Here comes the extra man up on the rush over the oh. middle. Too high for Sean Coffey. And he was wide open with room to move. Was Derek Straight ever? was beaten on the pattern. And he's 6'6". Six, six, and Straight's 5'11". And man, he, oh boy, that was that was close. And it's hard to overthrow six foot six, but it happens. So now second and ten. 39 seconds to play. Two on the wide side. Smith very rarely under his center. In trouble. Got it away inside, but short of the first down. They might want to use their final timeout. It'll be third and about six from the 35. Zach Abram. And they will use their final timeout. So 27 seconds left. Options running out for Finkel. Well, you, you got to start thinking about the hook and lateral and all those kind of all those kind of plays. Gary Pinkel's looking at his play sheet right now and thinking 30, 27 seconds to go. It's third down. I have two plays left basically to move the chains and stop the clock quickly. Then I can spike the ball to stop the clock without burning up downs. He's got to get a first down, then he can go up and spike the football and stop the clock because it would be a first and ten and, and save time that way. He has no, no more timeouts, but when, the, when they move the chains in college football, it stops temporarily, restart it, spike it, only lose a second. You've got to make your best call to generate a first down and keep the hope alive. And if you need to, after you get the first down, you've got a 6'4", 6'5", wide receiver, Justin Gage. You can take a chance in the end zone if you get him up against a small cornerback. Well, you got Gage and Coffee, and, and, and you go you go fade to both of those big old dudes and get the ball airborne and let them out jump people. Well, we talked about the level of competition earlier for redshirt freshman Brad Smith. It's far from over, but I don't think anybody will argue that this kid has arrived. Oh. And the University of Missouri is a quarterback for the next four years like Iowa State at Seneca Wallace. And he's even larger than Wallace. He's at 6'3", 200 now. Third and six. Moving the pocket by design. Throw is late. And it's intercepted. No. He had him available much McCoy. earlier. McCoy knocked it down. Darius Outlaw. And he's, you know what? I'll tell you something. Because I watched Outlaw the whole way. He didn't read his break because that ball should have been gone long before that. Outlaw, former quarterback, making the change to the to the uh, wide receiver position. Abagu is the guy that, or uh, what's his name, the receiver that was injured. I'm, I'm sorry. Aboga. Aboga, yeah. Aboga is the guy that should be in the football game at this point in time, but he's got a broken rib. Aboga, who knows if he makes that play, but here's the fourth down, the play of the game right here. Fourth and six at the Oklahoma 35. Out long, he comes trips over to the far side, the wide side. Brad Smith has all day, and that's the end of the game for Smith on the block. Oklahoma can celebrate. He couldn't pull the trigger. And you go back to a courageous call by Bob Stoops. On fourth down, instead of kicking the field goal, he says, McCoy, I'm running the fake, and you're going to throw it to our big tight end, and you're going to throw a good ball to Chest, uh, Chris Chester, and he beat double coverage for the winning points. Amazing football game. And, you know, Bob Stoops, I'll tell you, he lives to celebrate another day, as does do his Oklahoma Sooners. And just a whale of a game. So one snap, a knee taken, and it's all over. And Oklahoma escapes a quarterback they've got to deal with.